Glass, Fox News has been reporting. We're learning the sad news that this morning, former Republican senator and presidential candidate Bob Dole has died. He was 98 years old. Bob Dole, an American war hero, longtime senator and giant of Republican politics for decades, born in Lawrence, Kansas, and you know, he never left those Midwest values behind. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fox News Live on this Sunday. I'm Eric Sean. Hi, Arthel. Hi, Eric. Uh, I'm Arthel Neville. Senator Dole served as senator from Kansas from 1969 to 1996 at a time when uh, he was the Senate Majority Leader, of course. He famously ran against Bill Clinton during the 1996 presidential election. A uh, special report anchor Brett Baer right now takes a look back at the life and legacy of Bob Dole. I've never been prouder in my life than to have been the Republican nominee for president of the United States. As the 1996 Republican nominee, Bob Dole came as close as he ever would to winning the presidency, a dream he chased three times. He made his concession speech in Russell, Kansas, to the people who had known him since his birth there in 1923. World War II took Dole from Kansas to Italy, and just before the end of the war, Nazi machine gun fire shattered his upper body and destroyed his right shoulder. It was about 11 months, I think, before I could feed myself. I think I could have done it, frankly, been very honest about it, probably at eight months, but the nurses were very attractive. <laughs> After his recuperation, Russell elected Dole to four terms as county prosecutor. And in 1961, its voters sent him to the House of Representatives and re-elected him there four times. In 1968, Dole ran for Senate and won, spending the next three decades in the U.S. Senate. He became the Senate Majority Leader in 1984. With an acerbic and often self-deprecating wit, he established himself as a tireless power broker, pragmatic and able to work out compromises with Democrats. In 1976, presidential candidate Gerald Ford had selected Dole as his running mate. After their defeat, Dole sought his own nomination for president unsuccessfully in 1980 and 1988. What do you do? But in 1996, he decided to try again. He resigned his Senate seat and post as majority leader to focus on the campaign. The new season before me makes this moment far less the closing of one chapter than the opening of another. Finally, in 1996, Dole won the Republican nomination. I accept your nomination to lead our party once again to the presidency of the United States. On the campaign trail... We're going to win today, Senator. We're going to win. Right, looking good. 73-year-old Dole's boundless energy overshadowed his age. I think I have my strengths. I think the best thing going for Bob Dole is that Bob Dole keeps his word. Ultimately, though, Americans chose to re-elect Bill Clinton. After the election, Dole remained prominent in more ways than one. He lent his image to big-name products like Viagra and Pepsi. I feel like a kid again. He wrote several books, including an autobiography. Shortly after Dole's loss to Clinton, he visited the White House, where his former opponent awarded him the Presidential Medal of Freedom. No one can claim to be equal to this honor. It was at the same ceremony that President Clinton announced the design of a new World War II memorial a site that Dole would go on to visit on a regular basis, arranging travel for fellow World War II veterans to do the same. Yet he still never completely left the political world. Now that I'm out of work, I watch the Senate a lot. Yeah. <laughs> he spent his time helping his wife Elizabeth win a Senate race and accepting an appointment from President George W. Bush to co-chair a commission on problems at a military hospital. Senator Dole, who uh, is himself a veteran and a wounded veteran at that, Dis former distinguished senator, a man who knows Washington well, but more importantly knows the kind of questions to ask. He continued to push for answers on Capitol Hill as well, traveling there in support of legislation for disabled veterans. It's just the right thing to do. And advocating for politicians who share his vision, like Kansas Senator Pat Roberts, also urging Congress to confirm Mike Pompeo as the head of the CIA and Robert Lighthizer as a trade representative. So I'm very proud to be here because I know this man and I know 
He'll do a great job. One trip back to the Capitol was much tougher for him to make. In 2012, Dole entered the Capitol Rotunda to visit the casket of his friend, colleague, and fellow World War II veteran, Senator Daniel Inouye of Hawaii, as he laid in state. The pair met while recovering from combat injuries during World War II. They had both been sent to the same hospital in Michigan after suffering injuries from Nazi gunfire in Italy. There, Dole convinced Inouye to go into politics after the loss of his arm dashed his dream of becoming a surgeon. And Inouye did, making it to Washington as a Hawaii representative in 1959. Seven months later, Dole made it to the Capitol himself. A wheelchair-bound Dole needed the help of his wife Elizabeth and an aide to take the steps on his own feet. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid of Nevada later said Dole told him he wasn't going to let Inouye see me in my wheelchair. At 95 years old, he returned to the Capitol Rotunda again, standing from his wheelchair to salute another fellow soldier from the greatest generation, the 41st President of the United States, George H.W. Bush, a longtime friend. That determination is how Senator Dole earned respect from both sides of the aisle. We're also proud to be joined by a true American patriot, uh, a World War II veteran, one of the finest public servants America's ever known, uh, Senator Bob Dole. Senator Dole fought bravely in World War II and was severely wounded by German fire. And Bob, I know I speak for millions of grateful Americans when I say thank you. Thank you, Bob. Some of those grateful Americans were his own Kansas constituents. They continued to attend his speeches years after he left public office. Well, that's another bill that I was very proud of, and that's helping get the American Disabilities Act passed. But a more permanent reminder of the former majority leader from Kansas is back on Capitol Hill, a place he could never seem to leave. I may run again, so I'll probably be up here looking for bipartisan support. <laughs> there on the Senate side of the Capitol, a balcony named after him when he left the Senate in 1996, just steps from the Republican leader's office. Will it be in big letters or neon or? <laughs> During Dole's tenure, his colleagues had informally referred to the balcony as Dole's Beach, as he frequently held meetings there. But on his last day as senator, his colleagues voted to make it official. Senate Resolution 258 to designate the balcony adjacent to rooms S-230 and S-231 of the United States Capitol Building as the Robert J. Dole Balcony. But I object to the resolution, Richard. The Robert J. Dole well, Balcony is a tribute there. to the service he made within the halls of Congress, but also to his membership in the dwindling group of Americans who served their country in World War II. Out of the 16 and a half million World War II veterans, there are only about a half million of us left, and we lose about a thousand a day. In early 2021, Dole shared that he had been diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. In a statement, he said, Quote, while I certainly have some hurdles ahead, I also know that I join millions of Americans who face significant health challenges of their own. Days later, he was visited by newly inaugurated President Joe Biden at his Watergate apartment. The two had a bipartisan friendship and served in the Senate together for almost 25 years. Months before his cancer announcement, Dole spoke remotely to the National Press Club about reaching across the aisle and his hopes for America. And I had a great ride. I mean, I made so many, many friends, Democrats and Republicans. And when I was the leader, I reached across the aisle a lot because I believe the most controversies could be settled with a little time and a little compromise. I believe God has a plan for all of us. And it's up to God or whatever happens to me. I'm 97, but I still have all my marbles, and uh, that helps. But I think we have a bright future. In Washington, Brett Baer, Fox News. And God did have some plan for Bob Dole.
His loss went for our country. He was a man of principle, dedication, who overcame tremendous personal setbacks, a severe injury, but also he was a man of cutting humor and optimism. Our thoughts are now from Fox News with his family, his wife, former senator and cabinet member Elizabeth Dole.